So it's a motor controlled actuator, and here's a picture of it. Here is the motor back here. Here's the hand wheel. This is an actuator that's going to open or close a valve. The valve stem would be coming up through this area here. And we have a local indication here. And this is the cover where our electrical connections would be for the motor and also the limit switches and the uh, torque switch. So this is the exploded view of the actuator we were just looking at. This being the motor you seen on the side. Um, underneath the cover is where we have the limit switches and the torque switch. So the limit switch uh, being controlled by how much this worm gear moves, which in turn turns this gear here, which is going to bring the shaft up and down. The position of the valve is uh, through the gears is going to control the position of the limit switches. Now if the valve gets stuck for any reason, going up or down, then this worm gear going sideways is going to have some torque on it and it's going to have a little movement one way or the other controlling torque switches, which uh, we have an open torque switch in one direction, closed torque switch in the other direction. So let's go to the electrical schematic. And here we have a typical electrical schematic, limit torque actuator. Uh, up here, this being the three-phase power part of the circuit, going to the uh, reversing starter contactors, uh, three of them for open, to bring three phases over to the motor. Uh, through the overloads and three contacts for close to bring the phases over but in a different order as you can see here A phase would go to T3 C phase would go to T1 so with the phases going in a uh, different order the motor goes the opposite way and down here we have the control part of the circuitry this here is where the uh, AC voltage is going to go and in some situations, we may have DC voltage. Now, typically, we use uh, 120 volts. The hot leg will come off one of the phases. The neutral leg will come off of the neutral. Sometimes there's a transformer here. Right now, we'll go through the, the open scenario. So if this is hot, power is always going to be you know, all the way down this way. And it's going to go... We're always going to have hot here, here. So under normal conditions, uh, this area is always going to be hot. So looking at the open part of the circuit, we have a push button. It's normally open. When it's closed, that brings power up to here. Now this number four here, this is a limit switch. And to see when that limit switch is open or closed, you look down below. And we see that number four, look down here, number four, the solid line here, the thick line, that's when the limit switch is closed. So that limit switch is always going to be closed, except when you're fully open. Right? So let's just say we're at 50% open. We want to open the valve all the way. Well, valve position, if we're in the middle, that number four is going to be made up and that's going to be closed. And it's not going to open until we get fully open. So this is going to be made up. Bringing us all the way to this point here. So what do we have here? We have, this is a torque switch. When there's too much torque going in the open position, if there's too much torque, this will open up. But in parallel with that torque switch, we have another limit switch. That's limit switch number five. Let's take a look at the characteristics of limit switch number five. The limit switch number five is always going to be open. See the dotted line here? Until we get to the fully closed position. So we're not fully closed. So this is going to be open. As long as there's not too much torque uh, on the shaft or on the valve stem, this is going to be closed. So that will let the power go through here. Now how about this contact? Well, it says C, and C is controlled by this coil here, C. So since this C is not energized, this here will be closed. And that's to prevent both coils from ever being energized at the same time. So our voltage will go here, and it goes all the way to the side of the coil. This here is always going to have neutral. 
As long as the mode is not overheating, these contacts will be closed because they're heaters. This side of the coil should always have neutral. If there's neutral on this side of the coil, and it's hot on that side, the coil is going to energize. And these close. This will close. This will close. Bringing voltage to the motor. The other thing that will close is this one right here will close. This will close, bringing voltage up to here. And what does that allow us to do? Well, that allows us to let the older open push button. Therefore, now the power is going to go through this way right here. not the open push button so we can let go of the open push button and the motor keeps running keeps running until we reach our limit because number four limit switch that's going to open up when we're fully open and once number four limit switch opens up this coil is no longer going to be energized because no voltage is coming beyond this point These contacts also will be open and the motor will stop. Now let's talk about what is this limit switch here doing? If the valve is going closed, and if this is all made up this way, but if we're in a situation where the valve is fully closed and we want to open it up, we might have a lot of torque here and this will open up so during that time when we have a lot of torque we want to bypass the torque switch when we're first opening up the valve so that's what this limit switch is for Here is uh, the closed circuitry is the same as the open circuitry except for the closed coil would energize and that would close these three contacts instead of these three and these three contacts will bring the phases over to the motor in a different order making the motor go the opposite direction